Coming up on today's edition of Locked on Eagles, a few days away from the workouts at the 2022 NFL Scouting Combine, we're going to take a look at some of the drills that we see valuable for prospects and some that are maybe over hyped. We're also going to get into some over unders for the combine, courtesy of Bet Online. That's coming up next, right here on Locked on Eagles. <laughs> Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We thank you for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day, Monday through Friday. We've got a podcast for you. This is the Locked On Eagles podcast. Welcome into a Tuesday edition of the show. I'm Louis DiBiase. He's Gino Camilleri. Guys, we're available on all podcast platforms in video form as well on YouTube. And we're on Twitter at Locked On Birds, at DiBiase, L-O-E, at GC24 underscore football. Uh, Gino, you know, we've had the Senior Bowl, we've had the East-West Shrine game, the CGS All-Star game, the HBCU Bowl game. The NFL Scouting Combine is this week. Um, drills begin on Thursday, starting with the quarterbacks and skill position players. But we also have Howie Roseman meeting with the media tomorrow. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff today. You know, Chris Ballard and Frank Reich talking about Carson Wentz. Doug Peterson meeting with the media. So things are getting going down in Indianapolis, and the draft season continues to roll on. You know, that's the funny part is, like, we haven't even really started diving into our free agency previews, and yet we've had multiple major draft events. The draft really takes over the entire offseason, even before free agency. It really does dictate the flow of it. It absolutely does. And I always had a problem with when the draft comes after free agency because it's almost a redundancy at a position. Say you find a guy who's ranked as a second rounder on your board and everybody's a third rounder, right? And he happens to be at a position that you just signed in free See, agency. I thought about this too, actually, the yeah. other day. It's crazy you mentioned this. Like the NBA is set up the opposite, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it almost makes you overpay at free agency because you don't know if a guy's going to be available in the draft. Right. It's almost like an insurance, right? Because you mm -hmm. want to go in there, have the guy just in case things don't work out for right. you. Yeah, And I think you and I are always under the presumption and under, I would say, the philosophy that free agency is to help fill holes. And then mm -hmm. the draft is to help your team get better in the long run. Yeah. Because we don't want to be in a Danny Watkins situation. We don't want to be in a Marcus Smith situation. We don't want to be in a Jalen Rager, Rager situation. You want to be in a Devontae Smith situation, right? You want to be where you can draft the best player available for your team at any given time. Mm -hmm. And free agency kind of almost is a redundancy to an extent. But I don't think the Eagles are going to go out and spend all this money like other teams that have, I would say, $80 million in cap space. I yeah. believe the Eagles are going to hit it like they did in 2015 when they signed Rodney McLeod, they signed Brandon Brooks, got two bookend pieces, and really got what they needed. And I think safety is in the cards this go around as well, Lou, both in free agency and, man, there's going to be a ton of guys well, in the defensive secondary yeah. that test out of this world. And, you know, you know what's interesting about this conversation, too, about, like, free agency being before the draft is, like, you're right, and, you know, you don't want to force needs in the draft. But mm -hmm. it's also interesting, like, people talk always about just take best player available in the draft. But sometimes it's like, okay, but do you also want to force a need in free agency and feel mm -hmm. like we have to take a corner, and so we're going to throw a giant contract at this guy? You know, it, it's interesting that balance that you have to find, not forcing it in free agency either. And so, you know, it is interesting. I would prefer if the draft was before free agency for that reason because I would rather spend draft capital and really bet on the long term for a need than the, you know, short term of a contract. Unless it's like, you know, you mentioned safety, a big deal for somebody like Marcus Williams. But it is interesting. You know, the NFL is structured differently. I think they do it because, you know, the NBA has it differently um, in the NHL as well. But the NFL, I think it's mostly because – the veterans, like it's about the players, it's about the mm -hmm. veteran players. You know, if it did go this way and the Eagles got their corner in the first round, they got a mod Gardner to fall to 16 or 19, right? It, you know, the contracts might not go as well for a second tier corner, right? So I think the NFLPA is, is a big part of that structure. Absolutely. So, and I, I think that's a main reason anything 
in the yeah. NFL or any sporting league, for example, mm-hmm. does take place. Because the NBA draft, it's two rounds. That's it. The NFL, there's 250-some-odd players taking, plus all the undrafted free agents. You're right. It would do a disservice to those veteran players. And going back to the idea of not forcing and spending money, luckily under Howie Roseman, Lou, I don't think they've had any contracts that have kind of been like, overpayments in in my regard not in his second regime no second time as gm no i mean what's the biggest contract he's i don't know i mean it was probably mcleod and brooks in 2016 and they were seen more as second tier for agents as well it would probably be elsha and jeffrey's second contract after he came to fill of course removing the wentz deal i mean because that's different Absolutely. So for Howie Roseman and good teams, they have that limit. They put a cap on their cap, right? They know mm-hmm. where their ceiling is and where they're willing to go. And good teams Take discipline, man, won't before go past. the draft. It's it's tougher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you look at a team like the Giants, right? Go out, spend all this money on Kenny Galladay, and he kind of lays an egg. So now you're mm-hmm. stuck. Does he get better? Do you have a guy that now has a contract that you're saying, okay, I, I don't believe that we should have paid him that? And now you're seeing in free agency, which is just a couple weeks away, Lou, like two weeks from today, we're going to start to find out a ton of moves. Now it's all about bringing in the talent that you've addressed that is going to help your team and letting the cracks kind of fill in. It's almost like this trickle down effect because now we have our guys. Now we could see, okay, what does our 53 look like after free agency? And that's going to set the the page a little bit more. And this mm-hmm. weekend in particular is huge for that because they go to Indianapolis and this is where the moves start to get made. Like I wouldn't be shocked if we see by the end of a weekend, that first blockbuster deal yeah. for maybe one of the quarterbacks, right? Maybe or you see Calvin one of the, Ridley, you yeah, know. a big name wide receiver. Yeah. Saquon like Barkley Adams. apparently was, um, you know, in talks today for some reports, some rumors about potentially being available to Giants. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is interesting discussion. And, you know, I think, though, there could be a benefit for free agency being after. You know, I think about corner for this specifically because the Eagles have an interesting decision to make on somebody like Steven Nelson. It's like, okay, you know, we want to get better and improve at that CB2 spot. We want to get younger, more talented. But, mm-hmm. again, the draft is after the fact. And if we want an edge rusher, who knows what happens with quarterback and, you know, how the board's going to fall. They wanted a corner last year, too. Sertain and Horn just went early. Right. You know, you might want to have Nelson there. There, but Steven Nelson, it, it might benefit him more to see what happens after the draft. If the Eagles did take a guy and he already signed a contract, you know, those are things that players do have to weigh. But it is an interesting, you know, discussion for sure. A lot of that, you know, those talks, like you said, for free agency and trades are going to get kickstarted this week in Indianapolis. I'm sure they already have. When it mm-hmm. comes to the prospects, though, they have some important days ahead with meetings in the Workouts start Thursday through Saturday this weekend into Sunday as well. So what Gino and I are going to do coming up next on Locked on Eagles, we're going to take a look at some of the drills that are most beneficial, or at least that we put the most value on for the combine, the ones that we put more stock in than most, or at least the ones that I think most teams see as important pertaining to certain positions. So that's coming up next right here on Locked on Eagles. And we cover that. We will be be getting into some of the props that will go along with the NFL scouting combine. And there's only one place where you can get more props, make your own, and do exactly what you want to put some money in your pocket. And that is at the official sports book of the Lockdown Podcast Network, betonline.net. You know by now that football might be over, but we got props all offseason long. You got draft props, combine props. Where will Aaron Rodgers end up? Who will be the next quarterback in Tampa? You can bet all of that on the fastest and easiest interface of any betting site that there is. You can bet props. You can bet futures. You can bet soccer. You can bet hockey, football. Once it comes back, basketball is still going right now. College Hoops is about to get into March Madness. Make sure you go to betonline.net. Go there, find the bets that are going to win you some money. Make sure you bet responsibly while you're doing it. Get your phone out, go on your mobile device, go on your laptop, anything that has internet, just go to betonline.net, betonline, where the game starts. 
All right, Eagles fans, welcome back into this Tuesday edition of your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast, Locked on Eagles. We thank you for making Locked on Eagles your first listen each and every day. I'm Louis DiBiase. He's Gino Camilleri. We're continuing to preview this week's NFL scouting combine down in Indianapolis. Howie Roseman talks to the media tomorrow at, I believe it's 115, or Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman both talk 115. 130. We'll have a lot of takeaways from those discussions on tomorrow night's show. Uh, Gino, when it comes to the workouts that begin on Thursday, starting with quarterbacks and skill position players, you know, not just them, but defensive prospects as well, corners and defensive back safeties, linebackers, defensive linemen. When it comes to the drills, you know, we talked last Tuesday about, you know, the importance of the combine, you know, how to use it responsibly, what not to put too much stock in, what to take away from it in a positive and negative light. When it comes to now, like we didn't really talk about drills. You touched on it a little bit, but when it comes to like the drills that you put more importance on than others that you're going to be paying more attention to, what are some of the first ones that come to your mind? Honestly, I know people love the testing portion of it, right? Mm -hmm. But I love watching the individual drills, especially for guys like the linebackers, the defensive backs, yeah. that drill to see how much ground safeties can cover where they're flipping their hips multiple times and that they're going to go out, they're going to stretch as far as they can across the field and try and go up and get the interception. That's what teams look at. The drill, the combine numbers are great, right? Like you, you might shave a quarter of a second off your 40, you look better now, maybe you fail and you do better at your pro day. But one thing that you can show is how well you move in drills and it's an athletic league now mm -hmm. you're going to see the defensive line drills for example right and you're going to see how these guys move left to right they want to see how you can move laterally how quick you can get out of your stance what these guys are looking for are these players stiff do they have any weird movement in their gait when they're moving right. left to right and that's really what i find important from this whole weekend the stuff that you can't measure the stuff that is a, a qualitative aspect to the game like you can't really measure it outside of the advanced stats that they give you in the uh the amazon web service which of course tracks gps miles per hour and so on and so forth but you got to see with your eyes how well do these guys track the ball for example wide receivers when you're doing the drills where they're running go routes and you're seeing how they can catch it over their shoulder i think the gauntlet drill might be the single most important drill of the combine seeing how wide receivers can get in and out of their stance, flipping their hips while maintaining balance, while looking the ball in, while being able to keep their stride. Those are the things that apply to the real world and apply to yeah. the NFL when things are on the field. Because a 40 is great, right? But a mm -hmm. guy might run better in pads than he does in the 40. Yeah, Jerry Rice, 4-6 he ran. Some yeah, guys I don't think he speed. runs a 4-6 on the yeah, field. Yeah, some I'd players have game speed for sure. I, what I like about the 40 time is, you know, for me, sometimes it can, you know, when a player runs slower, again, that's what we talked about last Tuesday. If they run slow, don't define it, okay, he's a slow player, go back to the tape because, you know, that game speed, like you said, is different than 40 time speed. There's so much that comes into it when it comes to, mm -hmm. you know, stance. And you just might have been tighter that day or who knows. It's a lot different the preparation for the combine than an actual game, you know. So you don't want to put too much stock into it. But what you can use the 40 time for that I really like is, you know, somebody like um, Jahan Dotson. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see him potentially surprise people and run faster than people think. You know, everybody's so focused on how good his hands are in his route running, rightfully so but he's probably going to run in the four threes and that's going to only help his stocker. It's good too, to see like, okay, Traylon Burks, Drake London, we know they have the size and they can high point the football, but if they run in the early four fours into maybe the four threes with Burks, especially over London, like that can help their stock for sure. So again, it always just raises more questions. It should help surprise you and then bring you back to the tape and see if it translates. Um, so there is value, but I totally get what you're saying. There's some drills that apply more for actual football, whereas some of them are more just about physical gifts and traits, like, you know, the vertical as well. But, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I like the vertical too for cornerbacks and receivers because high pointing the football, being able to go up and get the football, like that is important. And so when you're a team that does – believe in, you know, betting on upside, those drills still are, you know, important for sure. Again, they're not things to put stock into like the Bengals did with John Ross, which is always the comparison or the analogy or um, yeah, the example that we'd use, but um, you just got to use it responsibly. 
Absolutely. For every position, really. I mean, yeah, is it cool to see a guy broad jump 144 yeah, inches? Like, like Byron like, Jones, I remember. I mean, I witnessed like a free agent at CGS jump 143 inches, and it was just a surreal athletic feat. But then does that guy transfer it over to the football field? I yeah. say the three cone, the lateral shuffle, the 20 yard shuffle, stuff like that can apply where you're moving left and right. How quickly can you get out of a three-point stance to get across the line? How well can you bend? How well can you corner? How well can you get back up and not get off balance in those drills? And I would say the quarterbacks testing, take that and throw it out of the throw it out completely. What they're for, they are there for yeah. is the drills where they're throwing to the wide receivers where you're really just watching two things that entire time. You're seeing how the quarterback throws the ball, and you're seeing how the wide receivers can track it. Right. So in Indy, it'll be nice for the quarterbacks to go and talk to people, but where they make their money is at the pro day, where they can yeah. script their runs, script their throws. They'll probably do 60 to 70 plays. You, you always go back to Zach Wilson launching that ball across his body wow. 70 yards, right? Stuff like that for quarterbacks is important. But in this setting, I would say it's more important for the big guys. I think the trench play, like the offensive line drills, seeing yeah. those guys move, get up to the second level, seeing the defensive the linemen get off the ground, do the shuffle over the three bags, shuffle over across the three bags again and sprint out. Stuff like that really does apply. Because when you're practicing and you're seeing these drills in day-to-day -day and in camp, you can find aspects of those drills in what position coaches do. I always look at the one where they're, they're the offensive lineman drill, where they have to stay under that cage, where they have to stay low, keep their balance, keep their feet. Stuff like that applies from the movement drills. Look at Jason Kelsey, right? If you look at an athletic center, you're looking at guys like Kenyon Green, Tyler Linderbaum, the Lindstrom out of Boston College. Um, also, the kid out of Chattanooga, who I can't remember his name. He was down at the Senior Bowl as well. But these guys, how can a 300-pounder move in space? Because yeah. at the trench play now, it's not about how big and bad you are. It's about how big, bad, and athletic you are. Mm. You have to have that third piece of it. And that's really where you could find the ballers in this athletic portion. Yeah, I think, too, like for linebackers, I really like the change of direction drill where they're laying down, mm. you know, on their back and they have to spring up. And then you see, you know, the coach change the direction of the football, seeing how quickly they can flip their hips inside and out, get left to right, then back up, then go downhill. Because mm -hmm. as a linebacker, you know, you're going to have to do that with play action, misdirection. When you're covering pretty much three levels of the football field, like a lot of the time they're asked to, especially guys that play on all three downs. Like that's extremely important. So you want to see just, again, it's about physical traits, just how naturally they can move mm -hmm. um, when they're in just, you know, shorts. Again, there's some guys that test out way better on the field. And that's something that you got to look into. There's other guys that, you know, don't do it as well in pads. So again, it's not something that you put everything into, but Gino, as we mentioned on Tuesday's show, it's just the more information, the better. And then you just have to mm -hmm. responsibly use that information. Um, so coming up next, we're going to get into some over-unders. Our official sports book of Locked On, the bet online over-unders are out for the combine when it comes to the 40-yard uh, drill, um, the fastest 20 yard shuttle, the vertical jump. We got some player props for you. We're going to get into that's coming up next right here on Lockdown Eagles. But guys, first, another shout out to one of our sponsors. It's rockauto.com. With the ever increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning? Wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry when you have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership? Rock Auto, their prices are reliably low for every customer. They're a family business. They've been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years now, and they have everything you can need to par uh, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Make sure you write down Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. 
All right, Eagles fans, welcome back into this Tuesday edition of Locked on Eagles. And uh, thank you so much for making Locked on Eagles your first listen each and every day. Make sure you're following Locked on NFL as well. Locked on experts covering the biggest stories across the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Gino, let's dive into some over-unders, courtesy of our official sports book, Bet Online. Again, you know, football, it is over for the regular season and the playoffs, but you can bet on the combine and free agency and the draft coming up. Let's take a look at some of the things you can bet on at the combine. And one of them, and it's the most popular drill for fans, and I think the media as well, it's the 40 time. Gino, right now, the over-under for the fastest time is placed at 4.29. What do you think about that one based on the prospects that are going to be participating? Uh, do you like that line? Would you take the over or under there? That's tough, man. I mean, what did Henry Ruggs run? He was a 4-2-7, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. I think John Ross was that 4-2-2. Chris Johnson was the 4-2-4. I mean, that's a generational number right there, right? Like, you guys say that they time in and quote-unquote handheld time or laser time, whatever you want to say. It's mm -hmm. all propaganda prior to Indianapolis, so we will yeah. see. I think somebody can run a, a sub 4-3, like a guy like Tariq Woolen. If he could get up to 22 and a half miles an hour in stride, I think he could eclipse it, man. Like, I really think there could be a 4-2-8. You got guys like Kelvin Austin, right? You got, mm -hmm. I, I mean, the big wide receivers in the draft, a guy like Jameson Williams or any of the top guys, Garrett Wilson. Those guys are speed demons, man. Christian Watson could come out there and blow the doors off it. You got the defensive backs. I'm going to take the under simply because I want to see it broken. That's the one where if I don't hit it, I'm on the right side of history. But yeah. if I do hit it, we're, we're rolling. And it was a fun combine. And we had somebody that tested extremely well. Yeah, it's interesting. I, like this year, I don't know. I mean, Calvin Austin, I think, has the best chance. I'm glad you mentioned uh, Tariq Wollin. He is somebody to keep an eye out for. I think there's some defensive backs this year that could run sometimes faster than the receiver. So right now, um, I bet online, cornerback is the favorite for the position of player with the fastest 40 time. Wide receiver second, then it's running back. Um, I would maybe take the over here just because, I don't know, I mean, I like Calvin Austin and Wollin, but with Jamison Williams with that torn ACL, mm -hmm. you know, there's not a ton of complete burners in this class. Like you mentioned, there is some really good speed, maybe one of those SMU wide receivers. I don't know, right. James Cook from Florida State, some running backs. But um, there isn't really like a, a John Ross, a Henry Ruggs where I'm like, this guy is definitely going to get in the four mm -hmm. twos. I wouldn't be surprised, like you mentioned. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if some of those players, Dotson as well, could. I think Traylon Burks is going to run in the four threes and turn heads. But to get crack into the four twos, I might play it safe and take the over. Fair. That's very fair. And like you said, uh, Henry Ruggs, it was like the show we were all waiting for. We were yeah. all waiting to see that. John Ross, we kind of knew he was going to test well. We didn't think it was going to be 4-2-2 two, two well. I think Drew Archer, too, back out of Kent State, we knew yeah, he was, was going to run really fast that year. natural track runner. Yep. Right. Marquise Goodwin, too. So Yeah, I mean, what, you got to be a world-class track yeah. athlete to run that fast. So we'll see. We'll see if any of these guys' track times – from uh, tracking football in high school can transfer over to there. And they got some guys that had that perfect uh, athletic score. So we might see one. I would like to see it, but it could be a 4-3 and miss it by a point one of a second. What do you think about the 20-yard shuttle here? The over-under is at 3.88. 3.88? Yeah. Whoo! That's, That's pretty quick. fast. The record's 3.81. 3.81? Yeah, oh, man. I mean, who who would you expect to to run this well? Like one of the smaller cornerbacks. I was gonna say those are the guys that are really good with yeah. short explosiveness, change of direction. I mean, I, I like Kelvin Austin maybe better there it. than the forty, but that's fast, man. That's real fast. I mean, four is good. Four seconds is solid. I I don't see anybody hitting sub three nine here. Like, yeah, I could see a, a, a three nine two, but I don't see anybody coming close to that three eight eight. Like that's. That's unbelievable flexion in all of your all your ankle, knee, your hips. Your balance has to be unbelievable. Your ability to accelerate and explode out of that stance. And hit, the thing about this drill, almost like the three cone, you have to hit it perfectly. Right. It's like Formula One. Like those guys have every corner 
pinpointed. They know exactly how they have to go on the straightaway. This is exactly one of those drills where you have to have so many things. So if you're thinking and a, a little thought pops into your head and you're not just doing the action, yeah, that could throw exactly. you off by like a tenth of a second, which I don't see. 388, that's fast, man. That's very I agree. fast. I'm going to take the over with you there on that one. Did you know I was looking through these? Um, apparently, Eagles legendary wide receiver Shelton Gibson has the fastest 60-yard shuttle. It's in a relevant drill. I don't even think they <laughs> test the 60-yard shuttle anymore. Yeah, I saw, that, I saw that listed as something you could bet on. I'm like, Wait, the Shelton Gibson, like our Shelton Gibson, West Virginia Shelton Gibson, the yeah. guy that drew a pass interference play and uh, they just signed the, in the CFL, uh, brother. He's still living. He's People still forget living. that he had that like fifty yard penalty drawn in twenty nineteen to set Josh McCown up in the fourth quarter, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it. Yeah, that isn't something really to look into too much. Um, some player props here, a couple noteworthy names with the forty yard dash. The one that we're excited about the most at quarterback, Malik Willis, is forty time right now. His over-under is at 4.4. Hmm. Oh, I'm going to – I might hit the under. I don't – You think he's going to run a sub 4-4? Four, four? Maybe that's just my heart saying that. Uh, <laughs> I look at it and I say Lamar probably would have ran like a 4-3-8. I don't know if Malik yeah. – Malik is a big boy. Like he's a big dude. He's got big legs. He runs fast. He gets up to speed quick. I think he has a good 20 time. I just don't know, like, long speed-wise, like, does he have that finishing gear, right? Like, he, he could get into stride relatively easily, but, like, does he have that top-turning gear to, like, get into sixth and finish? I mean, he does, I say comparatively four, four, four. speaking. Yeah, comparatively speaking, compared to other quarterbacks that have come in, I think he does. I don't know if he's, you know, top-level Lamar Jackson speed or Michael Vick, but I think he's right there. Like, I don't think he's – you know, uh, Josh Allen, Cam Newton, even Jalen Hurts type of runner with speed mm -hmm. or even Russell Wilson. Like, I do think he is in that tier one, but he's probably, you know, third or even fourth behind somebody like RG3. Um, but I'm fascinated with this one. That's a, that's a good spot to put him in because I think a lot of people want to believe he'll get under there. I know I do. I would probably make the heart pick there so I can root for him to get under, but you're probably right and go safe there with the over. Um, here is an interesting one from one of the bigger wide receivers, Drake London from L uh, USC. His over under right now is at 4.48. I think that's a good number. I, I think that's a, a pretty standard number for a guy of his size. I mean, you look at a guy like DK, like does he run as well as DK? No, but does he run – sub four five on the field. I don't think he runs as fast as Christian Watson, who I think could hit four four flat. Yeah. I think Drake London could hit like a four four five. I, I really do. But it this is a drill, especially with the big guys. Mm. Every stride has to be perfect. Yeah. Your 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 explosion off of the start. I'm not gonna recover as well. Had, yeah, they, they really won't. And I, I think if it was a guy like Calvin Austin who like his first step maybe he messed up, a guy like that could get up to speed really quick. Drake London, longer strider. If he's off a quarter of a stride, half a stride, does that throw off his time? I think he could hit four, four, five. I I, I would say four, four, eight is a good number for Vegas to have. Yeah, I like it, Lou. I think he he can run that for sure. He is a better run after the catch receiver than most think. I mean, he is seen as the above the rim receiver. Um, he's not to the speed I think of Traylon Burks, who I think is going to break four, four, but. Yeah, I think he, I mean, watching back this week some Drake London, I think he's going to surprise with his explosiveness. Um, again, not compared to Calvin Austin and the faster receivers and maybe mm -hmm. even Burks, but I would take the under there. I think he's going to surprise for sure. So you guys can bet on the combine at Bet Online. I mean, it's going to be a fun week. Again, you know, be careful and proceed with caution with how much stock you put into it, but there are a lot of positives to take away. There is a lot of information you're going to get and certainly is a useful resource. And again, it's entertainment now too, Gino. I mean, the combine is becoming more of a TV spectacle than anything with primetime workouts now. I mean, normally growing up, it's always been in the morning. So, you know, Thursday, Friday, and this weekend, you're going to have primetime NFL Combine coverage. We have you covered on all of our takeaways from the Combine on Locked on Eagles, Monday through Friday. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. we got a show for you every day. We're available on YouTube as well, and we're on Twitter at Birds at GC24 underscore football. 
and at DBiase, L-O-E. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. Now make sure your second listen is the Lockdown NFL Draft Podcast with Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker. They bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. For Gino Camilleri, I'm Lou DiBiase signing off. We'll see you tomorrow. As always, thank you for downloading. Thank you for listening and watching, and let's go Birds. Fly, Eagles, fly.